This is the story of how I saved the business with React and no experience. And actually, this is the story of my second ever React project. This happened many, many years ago when I was just starting out my React developer career. And actually, around the same time as this story, I was actually about to fail my first ever React project. Which, by the way, if you haven't seen the video that I did on that project, you should definitely check it out because that is also an interesting story. At the time, I was working for this Persian carpet store as their administrative assistant, which basically meant that my job was to do some organizational tasks around the office. And also, more importantly, I was also supposed to work on their website and make some small updates here and there. Now, the thing with this website, this was a very special website because it was built and hosted on this platform from Yahoo that was dated back to 1999. This was ancient, this was foreign, and even in today's standards, like I've never seen anything else that was quite as bad as that. Like, I'm not kidding. They even had their own HTML type extended language. I think it was called RTML, which by the way, you could not work with it. You could not edit that code in VS Code or even Notepad++ or any other editor. You had to use their web UI to write code and you couldn't even like write free code. You had to like select different pieces and put them all together. This was very, very strange. And this was actually my introduction to the world of web, right? Like working with this ancient platform from Yahoo, that was basically my job. And it was interesting to say the least. The problem with this platform and the website in general was that it was incredibly difficult to work with. I distinctively remember having to make some updates, maybe changing the price of a carpet or changing some sort of property of the carpet and that taking two hours to do. Like I'm not even exaggerating. Their design, their way of working was so outdated that just making the simplest update to the website would take almost half a day to do. That's insane. Not only was this wasting so much time, but this was also wasting money because on top of being slow, that whole thing made it super difficult to keep track of a physical inventory versus a digital inventory. Essentially, the carpets that you had in the store versus the carpets that you had on the website. Oftentimes, they would have to refuse sales because they thought that a carpet wasn't in store because it wasn't on the website, only to later on a couple of weeks or months later find it in store and then realizing that they lost the sale because of this platform. And even if it wasn't that, let's say that a carpet was actually in store and on the website and you actually did end up selling it, the steps that you would have to do to remove it from the website to mark it as sold was insane. I literally remember we had checklists of things to do and this whole process took like three hours just because of this platform made it so difficult to make even the simplest of updates. I mean, just think about what this means for the actual business, right? You have no way to sync digital inventory versus physical inventory. Things are always different. Things are always off, prices are off, descriptions are off. And to make any changes to that, to make any updates, it would cost you like a couple of hours and essentially half the day of your developer. So naturally, over time, I became fed up with this. Like I didn't want to do this anymore. This was so inefficient, especially when you know that you could do this much better. When you know that an update like this should be super simple and shouldn't take two hours, should take like five minutes, if not less. So once I learned a little bit more about React and once I realized that I could actually do a project because at the same time I was building my first ever React project. Again, there's a video on that. Make sure to check it out. I decided it would be a good idea to add more work to my workload and I decided to pitch them to rebuild their entire application from A to Z to fix all of their problems. That's very bold of me, right? Like that's super brave and actually naive and maybe even stupid to have this whole other project that remember like my deadline was insane for that project and then to see this opportunity and to say, yeah, for sure, I can do two projects at once. Of course, let me just take this on and also take the responsibility of delivering on my promise to fix literally all of their problems. Now, the thing is, this wasn't an easy ask. It wasn't going to be an easy yes, because they had been burnt before. They were aware, obviously, of these problems and they wanted to fix them and actually had tried multiple times before to fix these problems. The first time they tried, they hired this developer to build for them a custom software on Windows, on the Windows operating system, and essentially paid his salary for an entire year, only to realize that he was never actually delivering on the project. His application always had bugs and things not working and ultimately in the end they just fired him and all of that year's salary went down the drain and they never even used that application. Then a couple of months later they tried to hire this overseas developer specifically for that Yahoo platform which honestly surprised me that there's even developers for that platform but apparently there are. 
And even with that developer, it didn't end up working out. They spent thousands of dollars and it was just difficult to work with him and he never did the things that we asked. I remember having calls with him every single week, having to fight the difficulty because he did not speak very good English. So it was difficult to like tell him what we wanted him to build. And then when he did do the work, it wasn't correct. It was full of bugs. And ultimately we ended up ditching him as well, losing a couple of thousand dollars again. So naturally when I pitched them this idea, they were obviously hesitant because of their previous experience but at the same time I was working with them for a couple of years now they had built some sort of trust in me and eventually after some convincing and some time they decided to take a chance on me and give me the project and have me rebuild their entire application so somehow I started the second project still ongoing on my first project for the first couple of weeks I had to focus on the first project because the deadline was fast approaching but eventually that one calmed down the requirements went down and I was able to focus more on this one because this was also a really, really big project. I had to do the back end, the front end, the website, the landing page, the database, and sync everything together, and also implement features to fix all of their problems. Not only that, but this project also had a lot of constraints. I had to basically integrate the application with their existing workflows because they didn't want to change everything in the way that they were working. For example, their invoices were all generated using Excel, which meant that I couldn't do something different, something easier, I had to plug my own data into Excel, generate invoices using their template, and then connect everything together. So I didn't really have complete freedom to do exactly what I wanted to do, which made it a lot more difficult because I had to work with these existing constraints. This was honestly difficult. I worked really hard. I had to learn a ton of new things for this because remember, this was my second ever React project. And with everything that was going on, I didn't even have the time to properly like digest what I was learning. I was essentially learning a new framework, a new tool, a new library and then having to implement it and then move on to the next thing just because I had so much work to do so little time and the constraints were like insane. Now, you have to remember that this was my second ever React project, and this was done concurrently with my first. So really, the code, as you can imagine, was horrible. It was atrocious. The best practices were not followed simply because I did not know about the best practices. And I really tried to just make something that was barely working, that was presentable, and that sort of did the job, right? So don't expect like great code. There's no way that I would be able to produce great code. But I did manage to do something that was working, that looked good, and that somehow managed to solve their problems. Updating a carpet now took a couple of seconds instead of a couple of hours. There was literally just one form. You made your updates, you pressed update, and it was done, and it would automatically sync on eBay and everywhere else. If you wanted to remove a carpet to have it sold, you could easily do that in just a short of time. You also had automatic tracking of customers and invoices and what carpets they bought and when they bought them. You could actually see the details of the customer and you can manage your entire store, both digitally and physically, a lot easier with this application. After that, I spent the next couple of months doing some maintenance work, fixing some bugs, improving some things here and there. And then eventually I decided to leave to Europe to move because I saw that I had done these two projects and was feeling confident enough to really start my freelancing journey as a React developer. And so I decided to move, I left them the code, and I really went to start my software development career. These two projects are my first ever projects. They took like six months in total to complete. And they're really what made me confident to feel that I could actually become a developer and what gave me the courage to actually take the leap, move to Europe, move to a whole different continent and then do this full time as my career. So I'm very grateful for these two projects and I'm really, really grateful for these opportunities. What's really cool and super rewarding is the fact that all of these years later, they are still using the application in the same state that I left it. I didn't do any extra work after I left Europe on the application and they also did not get a developer to kind of improve anything. The application is is as I left it and still all of these years later they are still using it and still actually making money and selling carpets using that application. I know because I periodically just check to make sure that everything is fine that nothing went wrong and I get to see a little bit of their sales how they're doing just to make sure that things are proper. Obviously the application got a little bit slow because my database design wasn't really the most optimal but it's still functional they still use it they still use all of the features that I built for them.
them and it seems like their entire business is running on the application and that they are better off with it than they were if I had never built this application, which honestly feels really great as a developer. It's super rewarding and I wish this honestly on every one of you. So there you go, guys. That was the story of how I saved a business with React and no experience and also the story of my second ever React project. If you enjoyed this video, please click here to subscribe if you want to see more of these. It would really help me out a lot. You can also click here to watch my first ever React project and that whole story because that is also really interesting. So please do watch it. You won't regret it. And with that being said, my name has been Darius Cousin. This is Cousin Solutions. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Ciao, ciao.